I talk with Salesforce admins all the time, and one of the things they tell me is flow is intimidating. It's hard to understand, and they use terms I'm just not familiar with. The concepts are confusing, and I just don't get it. Maybe you can relate, and if, if so, you're in the right place. This is the first video in a new flow series I'm calling Fundamentally Flow. I'm going to break down some of the barriers that may be keeping you from being wild about flows. Hey everyone, it's Terry with Terry's Tidbits. I am so glad you're here. Let's start with an example. I bet you have a dresser in your bedroom. And I bet that dresser has drawers in it. Now, do you put stuff in those drawers? If you answered yes, then you have the ability to understand the concept called variables. You see, drawers are variables. It's true. Perhaps you're thinking, gosh, Terry, Terry you're, you're, you've kind of lost your mind here. Um, you used to be such a good guy that you, you, you really are telling me that drawers are like variables. Yes, it, it's, it's true. I do think <laughs> drawers are variables. Let me explain. I, I, I have this lovely pair of trailhead socks right here that I've never worn. But if I wanted to store them somewhere, I would put them into my sock drawer. And whenever I need to retrieve this pair of socks, I open up my sock drawer and pull them out. Drawers are variables. Now, now maybe, just maybe, maybe it's, it, maybe you're thinking that it's not clicking yet and where the heck is he going with this? Think about it this way. Variables like drawers store things we place in them. Let me say that again. Variables like drawers store things we place in them. I put socks in my socks drawer and anytime I need socks, I go to my sock drawer and always socks are in my socks drawer. Now, this will be a shock to you, but I like things well organized. So, I have shirts in my shirt drawer. Only shirts go in the shirt drawer. No socks are allowed in the shirt drawer. Socks go in the socks drawer. Now, I also have a pants drawer. Pants go in the pants drawer. You can't put shirts in the pants drawer. And you can't put socks in the pants drawer. Drawers are variables. And variables are drawers. Because they work in the same way. When we create a variable, we have to define what will be stored in that variable. We assign them a data type, and we have a variety of data types we can choose from. For example, we have a text data type. It's probably the most common, and it stores alphanumeric data. We also have a number type, a currency type, a Boolean type, which is like a checkbox field. We also have a record data type, not to be confused with record types. Those are not the same things. There are others as well, and you can read about them in the blog post um, that corresponds with this video. I would propose that you already understand the concept of data types because as a system admin, you almost certainly have created custom fields in Salesforce, right? 
Well, when you create a new custom field in Salesforce, what's the very first thing it asks you? It says, what type of data do you want this field to hold? That is a data type. Variables have data types just like custom fields have data types. Now I'm going to switch over to Salesforce and um, we are going to take a quick look at some of how this all comes together. So I have um, a variety here, about 20 records on the account object, and I have this field called CSTAT rating uh, for each of the records. And in the flow that we are going to use, it has, uh, all we're really doing is we're counting how many records do we have that are satisfied, neutral, unsatisfied, or have not been answered at all? And we're going to store those counts in what we call variables. Now, because I'm counting something, that would probably tell you that the data type should be a number data type. And so you will find as we take a quick look over here on the um, in the toolbox, we will see a set of variables right here they are. We have four of them, and they are uh, variable neutral count, satisfied count, unrated count, and unsatisfied count. And when we are looping through the data, all we are simply doing is taking the appropriate variable and we are adding one to that variable. That allows us then to continue to increment that variable, that value, until we get to the very end of our loop and then we are able to display those variables on the screen. Right here is that variable. Variable satisfied count, neutral, unsatisfied, and unrated. And then we can take action on that if we choose to. That is a very, very simple example of how we can use a variable. So let's take a quick look at at how you might create a variable. So I'm going to go into this assignment. You're going to, you can create variables all over the place inside of Salesforce, but I'm going to go into this assignment and I'm simply going to add a new one. And we've already got our example set up here, but let's, let's just create a new resource. And I'm going to choose the resource type variable. And I'm going to give it a name. It's a variable, so I'm going to use my naming convention of VAR at the beginning of this. And I'm going to call this R. I think this is in our satisfied, so I'm going to call it satisfied count. And because I've already got it created, I'm going to just call it um, count two. And here's where I need to choose that data type that we were talking about. And here's my variety of options, text record, number, currency, Boolean, date, time, and so forth. So in this case, I want to do this as a number. So I'm going to select number. Now, here's an interesting concept that we're going to talk about in the next session when we start talking about getting data. We're going to, it's this concept called a collection. You will want to watch that video so you understand what a collection is. In this example, because we're just simply iterating through and counting up by one every um, time this situation or this variable needs to be incremented, we don't need it. We don't need a collection, so we're going to ignore that. I also don't need decimal points here, so I'm going to set that at zero. Now I could put a default value in here of zero as well so that we, we clear out our number. And then I also have the option of, of setting this, making it available for input or output. Those two fields I know sometimes create confusion for people. They think, well, I've got to be able to see it on things, so I must need to be able to put it as an output because it's going to show on one of my screens. That is not what this is. <laughs> this, this is if I am passing a variable or a value um, into the flow as it starts to run 
or if I need to send this variable's data to another flow or when I leave this particular flow. So think of it as when I come into the flow and when I leave the flow. Do I need, as I'm creating this variable, do I need this variable to um, allow me to receive data into it or to push data out of the flow? And in our use case, we do not need that, but that's what these particular elements are for. That's all there is to creating a, a variable. It's a brand new resource type variable. We give it a name and we give it a data type. We set its values and we click done. And you have created a variable. And now you can store whatever you need to store into that variable, provided that it is the correct data type. That's variables. Hopefully that was a simple explanation and one that you're able to follow along. And if you would, please go read the blog post on the same video. Do like the videos, subscribe to the channel, um, read the blog post, follow me wherever you find me on social media. I just loved it. I love to have um, that connection with you and to know that the content that I'm preparing for you is something that's been helpful to you. So thanks for tuning in. We'll see you on the next video.